Hello everybody, my name is Star and I am your friendly neighborhood go-go dancer and this week we are going to be traveling in New York City and uh, Connecticut and I just wanted to kind of vlog the experience, you know, just to add another video to the to the docket? Docket, that's the word. I finally have the energy to drag myself out of bed and stop watching TikToks and I'm gonna actually start packing um, along with taking care of a few s things around the apartment, so... Join me! Join me! Second, it's Saturday. So, yeah, today's Saturday, and I haven't really been checking in lately just because I don't know. I'm with my friends. I feel weird like vlogging and talking when I'm with my friends and whatnot. So, I haven't really been checking in all that much. But you know, deal with it. That's how I live my life. I just have a moment to myself right now because everybody else is getting coffee and bagels. So, I have a few minutes to myself to kind of vlog. Uh, the past few days have been really great. The trip has been going wonderfully. First night we stayed in Connecticut with a friend, um, his family. Uh, just stayed the night there and then the next day kind of did a little bit of wandering. He grew up in C Connecticut, so we just wanted to see his old stomping grounds and whatnot. And then after we packed up to go to New York and we took the train, I've been on so many freaking trains in the past couple of days. So after taking the train to New York, we kind of settled in to uh, this apartment, which there's the balcony. It just looks like a mysterious white ether. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and then we've been sleeping here. Other friends have been sleeping here. Another friend's been sleeping here. I did not expect the amount of claustrophobia that I was feeling while I was uh, in New York. Just the idea that all of the, every single business building, living space is so incredibly jam-packed. It just extends for miles and miles. Like that level of compaction just extends an incredibly far distance and it just feels kind of inescapable. But I did get over it on like day two in New York. So just a fair warning, if anybody wants to visit New York and hasn't, if you have claustrophobia, uh, keep that in mind. I am not a claustrophobic person. New York is built different. That's what I'll say. It'll make you feel claustrophobic even if you're not a claustrophobic person. So we got into here and then we, yeah, we just kind of, we didn't really do a whole lot. We went to get tacos, but that's it. Yeah, we just kind of turned in for the night after that. 
then we then the next day um which was yesterday we did so much um we got up we got coffee and bagels which i wanted to get bagels while it was here place was great and then we kind of waited around for like our other friends to meet up back with us first we took the train we got pizza at joe's pizza i didn't get anything because i was still full from the bagel that morning um then we got back on the train and went to get um went to central park and then we went to the Natural History Museum, roamed around there for quite a bit. Standard gazelle. <laughs> Punk gazelle. Saw a bunch of dinosaur skeletons, learned a lot, which was cool. I like how the little blurbs in the Museum of Natural History are set up. They're actually interesting. They're bite-sized so that like someone, a layperson like me, can learn and understand what's going on. And I like also how with science, sometimes you don't find the answer for some stuff, like dinosaurs, so they kind of give you their theories about dinosaurs instead of saying this is definite fact. Um, or sometimes you make mistakes in science, so they show like what that mistake was in the past. So I like the little blurbs in there. After Museum of Natural History, oh my god, we got one of those, we went to one of those street vendors and got a hot dog and a pretzel. That is the worst hot dog I've ever tasted and I didn't even finish all of it um, and I had Peter try it and he threw it away after like one or two bites and then Peter got a pretzel he hated it so he passed it to me to try and I like tolerated it because I was pretty hungry but I did not finish it um, so don't get the don't get the street hot dogs at least not the ones outside of the natural uh, history museum it was so bland and flavor- like, I've never had a hot dog taste like nothing. And I, and I never want to taste that again. <laughs> After the Natural History Museum, we went to the Rockefeller Center because one of our friends works there. So we got to see some cool views from his office. Um, yeah, and after that, we got dinner. We got dim sum at a place. It was just really good. Ate so much food. And then we split off. When we split off, we went back to Rockefeller Center because one of our friends accidentally left his hat and mittens there. All of us are under the influence of something. I'm not gonna specify what specifically because uh, it may or may not be fully legal to say that or just ad friendly or just YouTube friendly to say what we're under the influence of, wink wink. And to get into these offices, there is a check-in point at the base of the elevators, at the ground floor of the elevators, where you need to have like a pass that says you work here um, to let you into the elevator section. And so our friend, he just like buzzes us all in. Then you go up the elevators and there's a second set of doors where you need the working pass to open the doors. We grab the hat and mittens and I don't know, we're just like hanging out there. We're not really on any sort of time crunch. The friend who works there, um, he kind of likes to break off from the group and wander around. We're like, where, where did our friend go? Let's, let's go find him. So we start walking around in the, in the circle. This floor of offices is just kind of like a big square hallway. We eventually see him and like start to catch up to him. And he sees us and he waves at us like, oh, cool. And then he like walks around the corner and it's like, um, should, do we follow him? Or maybe we're standing next to the elevators, the door to the elevators. Oh, maybe he's going to meet us at the elevators. So the three of us walk into the door to the elevators. And then we realize we can't get out because we need a work pass to get back into the floor of offices. And the one person that let us in is in there. So we're stuck in this section of elevators and we're like, ah, oh, shoot. Uh, let's let's message him and the one friend goes I have his phone we're like oh no but wait he has my phone like oh just message your phone his phone was dead so the one person that we need to get us out of this locked elevator section is out there with a dead phone <laughs> 
And he's very, I'll just say, he's very high at this moment. <laughs> and he's just wandering around and has no idea what happened with us. This is at like 8 or 9 p.m. So this office is empty. So the one friend that's with us gets the idea, oh, he has a he has a Fitbit smartwatch. Uh, maybe I can buzz the watch. So he starts like buzzing it. And then we get a message from our group chat from the other half of people that went back to the apartment saying his watch is here at the apartment. So now we have fully exhausted any way that we could reach our friend. So we're waiting in there for like another few minutes and thankfully a couple minutes go by and he walks past the glass doors and we see him and opens up the door and we tell him everything that was happening. Apparently he was charging our friend's dead phone that whole time and was like, man, they're taking a long time to, to come meet me up over here. Well, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I should go check on them. So that was the fun little story being locked in the section of elevators in Rockefeller Center. <laughs> I will say that this trip was just a bunch of friends together uh, in New York and shenanigans were bound to happen and that was definitely one of the shenanigans that happened. I was kind of expecting it and it's a great story to tell after the fact. <laughs> so after getting locked inside of Rockefeller Center, we went to go see Times Square. Uh, we didn't really do much here, we were just kind of here for a few minutes just to see it for the sake of seeing it. And the other half of us went home and so after we saw Times Square we went home. The next day is when I was actually doing that little bit of vlogging, so you saw me getting ready for the day. This is my outfit for the day. We went into Chinatown for lunch, and we went to this place that did rice rolls and congee. It was super good, like, the rice rolls, I love that texture of noodle. Like, I ate so good on this trip. But after lunch, we went to the, kind of the area of the 9-11 memorial. We went next door to this thing called the Oculus, which is this cool fishbone architecture building. Um, it's actually a shopping mall on the inside. Um, we didn't really do any shopping in there, we just wanted to see the fishbone. It looks really cool from the outside, um, and this is what it looks like from the inside. We went to Battery Park after that, where you can actually see the Statue of Liberty. It's kind of far away. In order to actually see the Statue of Liberty up close and even go up inside of the Statue of Liberty, that would have taken like a significant chunk of the day. So I was just happy to be able to see it. And then after that, we took a bus to go on the High Line, which is just kind of a walking path. But it's a nice, quiet little walk through. You're kind of above um, all the sidewalks and roads and whatnot. So it's you get to see everything. You get a lot of nice views, especially since the sun was kind of setting at this point. And eventually the High Line takes you to this shopping area where we get to see the vessel. And the vessel is this big beehive looking thing. Apparently you were able to go up to the top of it at one point, but uh, apparently some kids tried to commit suicide off of it. So now they charge admission to it. So if you're gonna commit suicide off of that thing, uh, you gotta pay. Who wants to pay to commit their own suicide? Could it be me? And then the last day, we didn't really have a whole lot of time to do really anything. Um, we started off the day by getting bagels, again, from a different place at least, um, and then coffee from a different place. After that, we decided to head out to this one park, which I don't remember the name of, but it's right up against the water and it looks very pretty. You can see pretty much all of Manhattan and all of, I don't think, I think that's Midtown. We basically had time to go to this park and back to pack up and leave for our flight. Anyways, I'm back home and rested. It's been a week since the trip. Um, and a couple of things that I kind of learned, discovered from this trip is that me and Peter, we do periodic vacations. We don't plan anything, we don't schedule anything. They are supposed they are supposed to be relaxed, do nothing vacation staycations so that we can relax and rejuvenate um, and not stress ourselves out with trying to do a bunch of stuff on a vacation. We did a lot on this vacation and I kind of forgot that you can do stuff and relax at the same time. 
Like, despite the fact that we were walking everywhere and, like, being actively social for a lot of it, it was still relaxing and rejuvenating. We're definitely going to do vacations like that in the future. Not to knock anything from the do nothing vacation, but the do something vacations are still relaxing. So now that I've visited New York for the first time, as fun as it was, I do not see myself living there. It's so exp it's so expensive and everything is so cramped and I just feel I felt really claustrophobic there. I, it did make me understand why people uh, romanticize the small town life because if you grow up there and you live a number of years there, yeah, I would romanticize guess, just getting some space and some time in nature. It did make me appreciate the kind of balance between city and spaciousness that I have in Minneapolis. I work downtown with a bunch of skyscrapers, but also once a day, once every other day, I take a morning walk with my coffee on a lake that is frozen. Like there's nothing out there. I like New York. I, I don't know if I would vacation there on my own. I would vacation there for the purpose of seeing friends. Which on that note, immediately after we got home, we were like, man, we miss New York, but not necessarily New York. We miss our friends that were all in New York. We were pretty cramped in there, like five of us sleeping in a living room, like smaller than this bedroom. There is something very sleepovery, staying in each other's dorm type of vibe feeling that was from it, and it was, it's, it's quite a bonding experience. And you felt really close with all the friends that were there, and it definitely made me miss them once, uh, once we were gone. We are probably going to visit our friends that live in Boston, but I think we are going to make that trip to Boston to see those friends sooner rather than later. And I think in general, this trip just inspired me and Peter to travel more. Um, during the pandemic, we couldn't really travel, and I think we forgot how much we missed traveling. My throat is getting really sore and dry talking this much, so I will see you guys next time. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me if you guys have been to New York. Tell us what we should check out next time that we're in New York, because we'll probably go there again at some point. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!